6.4. What you can do, I can today, you will be able to, we have been writing equations, but I've given you the slope, I've given you the y-intercept, um, and then there was a point where you had to find it off a graph, and you had to find it off a table. Today you're going to write a linear equation in slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b, and I'm going to give you a description of the slope, and I'm only going to give you one point today, all right? So you're going to be able to write up an equation given a verbal description of the slope and one point. Let's practice. Example one, it says write an equation that represents each situation. Write the equation in slope-intercept form, and what is that? I just reminded you, what is slope-intercept form? Y equals? Nice. MX plus B. All right. So first of all, let's find our M, and then we have to figure out our B and write our equation. Y equals what? And here's the information given to you. During your summer, you deposit $50 per week into your savings account. $50 per week. So is that an increase or a decrease? increase every week $50, what would that be in your in your slope-intercept form equation? What do you think that $50, what is an increase? Is that a steady increase? $50 every week, what would that be? We would call that our what? Is that a constant rate of change? Every week it changes, it goes up $50? Yes. What's also known as our constant rate of change? The what? The slope. That would also be known as your M, our slope. So our M is a positive 50. It goes up $50 every week. At the end of four weeks, you have $300. Do we know where it intercepts the y-intercept yet? No. So what do I know? I know my slope, and then I know that I have one ordered pair here. My x and my y. I have on the fourth week, it was $300. Here's my X, here's my Y. Well, by what's given to you, it says you can, so by looking at this, we still don't know the B yet. We don't know where it crosses our Y intercept. We're down here on the graph, and we have our tables down here, 0, 0, 1, 2, and so on. Here you go by 50s, 100s. 150, 200, on your table. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten weeks. What do I know? I, I have one ordered pair here of four and 300. So I could put that over here. So we go to four. <coughs> and 300, right there. Now what is our slope? I have one point. I can figure out my slope is what, 50? How do I make it a slope so I can rise over run, put it over a one? So I can run a positive one and up 50. Well, this is up 50 because each line is 50. Right one, up 50. Right, one, up 50, and so on. Then you can go backwards. Can we figure that out? Now do we know our y-intercept by looking at our graph? What is my y-intercept on the graph? Because this is just quadrant one. Our constraint is in quadrant one. Because if you're going to be adding $50 a week, that's not a negative. You're not going to be using any of the negative quadrants. All right, so your y, your x, what is my y-intercept now? 100, right here. It's exactly at 100. So I know my b, my y-intercept, is at 100. So when you opened up your savings account, well, let's write our, finish our equation here first. So now I have my m and my b. y equals 50, because that's my m. My b is 100. 50x plus 100. 
So what was my savings account when I opened? How much money did I have in my savings account when I opened it? You had $100 in your savings account when you opened it that summer. And then you made $50 a week. So how much money did you have in week seven? After seven weeks of summer working and depositing $50, how much money did you have in week seven? You can tell by two ways. You can tell by looking at the graph here. Week seven, how much money did you have? $450. Does that work in here? What is 50 times seven plus 100? What's 50 times seven? What's five times seven? 35 and add a zero. What's 35 plus, or 350 plus 100? 450. So either way it works. Okay? That's one way of finding the B, if they give you the slope and a point. You could always, you know, if there's a graph, you could, you could put it on a graph and find it. Now there's another way that I can show you how to find it if you don't have a graph. Well, I guess we have practice one more graph. Write an equation that has a slope of 3. So they're telling us right now, my slope is 3. I'm putting that right there. And in my equation, y equals 3x. So I'm half done with my equation y equals 3x. My slope is 3. What else do we know? What else do I know? There's one more thing that we know about this graph. What is it? Right here. Excellent. So I know that one of the points is a negative 3, negative 7. So on my graph, a negative 3, negative 7. Put that down on your graph. My x, my y. Now we can graph it by the slope. What is our slope? 3 or 3 over 1, right? It's a positive slope, so it's going to be running in this direction. Tell me how to plot my next point from here. What do I do? Give me directions. To the left or the right? To the Right, how many? To the right, how many? Rise over run. I run one, and then what? Up three. Up three. One, two, three. Put a point. Right one, up three. One, two, three. Right one, up three. One, two, three. Now do we know where our y-intercept is by graphing it? What's our y-intercept? Two. Two. So the B is 2. So Y equals 3X plus 2. That's how you can find your Y intercept by graphing it. But now, like I said, when we get to this point, we get some practice where you won't have a graph. You can still figure it out without having the graph. So to calculate the Y intercept given the slope in one point, you have to use Y equals MX plus B, slope intercept form. Then the ordered pair provides the values for your x and your y. You substitute the numerical values in for the slope. Then you use your inverse operations to solve for the equation for b. So you draw your line, red rover, red rover, and solve. Okay, so let's practice the first one. Example A. Write the equation for the described line. Well, I know my slope is a negative 3. So part of my equation is already done. y equals a negative 3x. That part's done. But now I have to find my b and I do not have a graph. So right here is this ordered pair. 7 and negative 2. I have my x and I have my y. We have your slope intercept form. y equals mx plus b. Draw your line down that equation. Do I know what my y is? If I know this point, I know that my y is what? What is my y? 
So let's substitute a negative 2 in for the y equals, do I know my m? I do know my m. They told it to me right away. My slope, my m is a negative 3 times, do I know my x? 7. Yep. Thank you. 7. So 3 times 7 and plus b. B is what we're looking for, our y-intercept. So let's find our b, and we don't even have to put it on a graph. What do I do first? Remember your orders of operations. What would I do first? Times what? Negative 3 and 7 is? A negative 21, and I still have my positive b over here. Negative 2 over here. Now what do I do? I add 21 to both sides, red rover, send over, with the inverse operation, cancels out. Where is my y-intercept? That's a negative 2 and a positive 21. Fight or no fight? Fight, who wins? Positive 21 by how many? By 19. Where does it cross your y-axis? At the 19. So y equals a negative 3x plus 19. So you can figure that out. A lot of times this is nice because it goes off the graph. You know, if, it, if you don't know where it's going to go across, your graph isn't, your graph is too small, you can't see where it crosses on, on the graph. <clears throat> so this method is nice to use for that. Let's try this one. Here's your m, so y equals mx plus b. Here's your x, here's your y. So put your m in here, put your y here, and take this x and put it here. And then I want you to solve for b and write your equation. I'll give you about a minute to figure this out. Hold up your equation on your boards, please. Alright, a lot of you got the right answer. The majority, a lot of you that come up with the wrong answer came up with 3 for your B. I'm interested to see how you did that. But anyway, the M, so we'll start with the Y. My Y is a 5, so 5 equals, my M is 2, 2 times X. My X is a negative 1, and then we don't know our B. That's what we have to solve for. So 2 times a negative 1 is a negative 2. Am I doing this right? No, that's a 5. No, that's right. This is a 5. Okay? Bring down the plus B. Is this what's happening? Is that how you guys got your 3? Did you minus your 2, I bet? Did you not make your minus 2 here? Okay, because a positive 2 times a negative 2, or 1, is a negative 2. So I bet that's where you got your 3. And then instead of plusing 2 to both sides, you minused it. All right, so now in this case, we have to plus 2, 7 equals b. So now that you solve for b, you can write your whole equation because we've got our m and our b. So y equals 2x plus 7. Done. All right, let's try this one. Your slope is 1 half. Here's your x and your y. Substitute in. And solve for your b and hold up your final equation on your boards, please. y equals 1x and over here. All right, it should have looked something like this. You should have put in your y is 7 equals your 1 half times 8, which is the same as 8 over 1, plus b. Well, 2 goes into here once, 2 goes into here 4. 1 half of 8 is 4, so 7 equals 4 plus b. Minus 4 to each side, you end up with 3 equals your b. So this is going to be a plus 3 in your slope. They already give it to us. y equals 1 half x plus 3 what you should have ended up with. 
All right, another fraction. Try this one. M, your slope, is 2 thirds. So I already know that Y equals 2 thirds X. Now I just have to find my B. Remember, this is your X. This is your Y. Y equals MX plus B. Hold up your final equation after you solve for B. All right, substitute it in. You have a negative 1 equals 2 thirds times a negative 3 over 1 plus B. Well, you can just multiply across if you want and you get a negative 6 over 3, which equals what? What's a negative 6 over 3 simplified? A negative 2 plus B equals a negative 1. Well, now what do I have to do? Red Rover send over. What's the inverse? plus 2 to both sides. What does B equal? We have a battle of positive winds by 1. So B should have equaled 1. Y equals 2 thirds X plus 1. Final answer. All right, one left. When you get the right answer for this one, I will hand you your packet for homework and you have pages 1 and 2 to do for today. So Y equals, I know my slope, negative 1 X you need to find out your B. Y equals MX plus B. Substitute it in. A negative 4 equals <coughs> a negative 1 times 6 plus B. So you need to find out your B. Hold up your answer when you get it. And then what happens is you get a negative 1 times 6 is a negative 6 plus b. We have our minus 4. What's the inverse of a minus 6? A lot of you were minusing 6 to both sides and ended up with a negative 10. It's not negative 10. This a negative times a positive is a negative, so the inverse is plusing 6 to both sides. Now we have b equals, it's a battle, the positive wins by 2. So it should be y equals a negative 1x because they gave us our slope, plus 2. Done.